We talk about how easy it is to use the RT Systems programmers. Let me take a few minutes to show you some of the really special things in the program so you can customize it and make it even easier to enter your data. We go to Settings and down to Preferences. Everything on these four screens control how the programmer works. Not how your radio works, but how the programmer works. We're going to start here on the grid display. Freeze columns. It's set by default to column 1, which is your receive frequency, which means when I scroll to the right on the screen, receive frequency will always be there. If I increase it, this would be receive and transmit. Offset would be included. Whatever you need to be frozen on the left so you can always identify the information in that row. Alternate row colors. For color is the text. Back color is the background. If I pick a color, and I'm going to make it fairly light, this is just a Windows color selection. Notice now row 2, row 4, and if I click Apply, the spreadsheet turns that way, again, making it easier for you to read it. Use combo boxes for check boxes. Attenuator is a check box. All these banks are check boxes, half deviation, clock shift. On some systems, these check boxes don't show up. It'll just be a square. But by checking this box, these will all turn into yes, no, or on, off drop downs, and you can make the selections. You can still do column editing, and you can still copy and paste, just like you would with the checkbox, but it'll just be a little different text on the screen. Language. I'm in English. I can be in German, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, or Japanese. If we go to German, it will prompt me that the program has to restart. What it's going to change are these column headers. And text on the screen, headers like these headers will turn to German. Messages will be in German. Mark columns to hide. It's going to do exactly what it says. I can notice receive frequency is in here. Receive frequency is always available so you can see what's going on with that channel. But we can hide transmit, offset, offset direction. Let's hide some of these we don't ever use like DCS and DCS polarity, user CTCSS, step, attenuator, S meter. And when I apply this, watch the screen in the background. All those columns went away. And now when I work on the spreadsheet, those columns are filled with defaults. They're still there. They're still being used by the program. You just don't see them. Again, making it easier to enter data. I'm going to turn all those back on because I want to show you something else in just a minute and I need them all turned back on. Hiding columns with this screen also will let you customize a printout. A lot of people call and they want to just print out the receive frequency so they can tell which channel a frequency is in. If that is all you want, hide everything else and then do your print. And that's the only column you'll get. Everything else will go away. Memory defaults. When you enter a frequency for the memories, the program does a lot of things automatically. That's what we're going to control on this screen. Open last file when starting the programmer. That reopens the last file you saved. It's a convenience. If you don't want it, just uncheck it. Check show name automatically. This radio doesn't have a show name, but it would be a column right here. And just when you started typing in name, show name would check. Because we presume if you're going to type in a name, that's what you want to see on the display. Convert split offsets to standard plus or minus when available. This is mainly for the Yaesu radios. They work on a 50 kilohertz offset. And if you have a split, 147.350 and 154.445, but it can be calculated on a 50 kilohertz step, you might want to leave that as a plus and minus rather than converting it to a split. The radio will work the same way both ways with either option. 
Disable CT CSS, DCS, and other tone columns according to the tone mode selection. When I set tone mode to CT CSS or to encode or to tone, depending on exactly what the program says, this column, the CT CSS column, is active. The DCS columns are not. If I uncheck that, all of these are active and you lose the ability of knowing which one you need to set to get that tone mode to work properly. This way we activate and deactivate according to your tone mode selected. It just makes it easier. We point you in the right direction. Add and remove offsets. These are the standard offsets you're going to see in this offset frequency column. If there are things here that get in your way or there's something extra that you need, you can adjust it here. Offset frequency defaults. When I enter a 440 frequency, it's automatically going to default to 5 megs. In 2 meters, it's going to default to 600 kilohertz. A lot of the Europeans need those to default to a different value because that's what their repeaters are doing. You just drop this down. This is the same list that you see over here. You make your selection and then when you make an entry, it will use that amount to figure your transmit frequency rather than what you see here. Font. These are all the fonts on my computer, all the sizes that are available. I can change the fonts of the headers and messages to whatever I want and I can make them bigger, bigger, smaller, whatever I need it to be. This will give you a sample of what it's going to do. When I apply, notice how much easier it is to read and I didn't have to change the global settings on my computer. I just changed it right here. Other. Use separate file for menu settings. I'm going to cancel right here. I'm going to come right back. Settings, radio menu settings. All these settings that are the rest of your radio. By default, the program holds these in a separate file. So once you have customized all of this, you don't have to touch it up again if you make a new file. You have your home file and you have your travel file. And I'd hate it if you had to go through here and recheck all the boxes and reset everything so your radio was the same as it is in everyday use. That's why we hold them separately and we save this file by itself. The other option on that page made it so all these settings are directly related to the frequencies on this page, to this file. That is really good if you're doing programming for your ham radio club and your volunteer fire department and your ambulance group for the same radio. And they want things customized out here differently. Could be one, could be lots of different settings. Their frequencies may be similar, but then when you save this as ham radio group or fire department group or ambulance group, you know that the entire configuration of the radio is set up to match that radio and when you open that file, all that configuration is there without having to touch anything up or go find another file. So it does have reasons for being there, does have a good use, it's just in general it's easier for most people if you leave it as used for separate files just as it's checked, set it up once, save it, and then you don't have to worry about it again. This is the other option I showed you. Keep menu settings and frequencies in a single file. And this way, every time you make a new file, you've returned to defaults, but you can customize everything and have it go with the frequencies in the file. On this screen also, open new file when needed for get data from. This should be the first thing you do whenever you install a programmer is to make sure this is checked. This will keep you from overwriting a a file that you've been working on. It is not checked right now. Let's say I've been working in this file and I've put in a hundred frequencies and I do communications get data from. The first thing we do is we warn you that it is going to overwrite this file. Continue. It's asking do you want to continue? Do you want to overwrite this file with what is in the radio? If you tell it yes, that is the end of all that you have typed in because the radio is going to overwrite it. If you tell it no, your file is safe. 
what this setting does for you. And we're going to apply this and tell it OK. I've been working away in this file and now when I do communications get data from radio it doesn't warn me that it's going to overwrite it just opens a new file. The file I was working in is tucked away back here and when I want it I just go back to it and I can send it to the radio. One more time back to preferences. Use different windows for each radio programmer. That's what I'm doing now. Everything I'm opening is for the FT1D. Everything about this is for the FT1D. If this were unchecked and I opened the FT8800 programmer, it would open right here in another tab. And then I could open the VX8 programmer. And they would each open in a tab. And whichever tab is active, the entire programmer is dedicated to that radio. You lose no functionality. You can still copy and paste between them. You can still move things around. All the functionality is there, whether it is in one window or they're in separate windows. So this gives you an idea of some of the things you can do with the program. Make it easier to use. The other one I wanted to show you is right here. That was Edit and Simple Mode. Notice the screen collapsed. This is the minimum you need to work with for your memory channels. Transmit and Receive Frequency, we leave them both open in case you have a split. Offset Direction, we leave it open in case you need to change it from the standard. Name and then Tones. We leave skip open just in case something comes up and you need to skip a channel. 